arrow notation for asymptotes. Recall the reciprocal function from our library of functions. This should be a base image for what some rational functions may look like. We'll start with this to discuss the end behavior and asymptotic behavior using arrow notation. Take a look at the reciprocal function. As x approaches negative infinity, the function gets closer and closer to zero, so f of x approaches zero. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches zero, but from the other side. This doesn't change our arrow notation, though. We might also use arrow notation to describe the vertical asymptote. As x approaches zero from the left, or negative side, f of x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches zero from the right, or positive side, f of x approaches positive infinity. If we shift a function up or down, the ends of our arrow notation change when approaching positive and negative infinity. If we shift the function left or right, the beginning of our arrow notation changes to approach a number besides zero on either side. If we take g of x equals one over two x plus three plus one, we'd say that as x approaches negative and positive infinity, g of x approaches one. We'd also say that as x approaches negative three halves from the left, g of x approaches negative infinity, and as x approaches negative three halves from the right, g of x approaches positive infinity. For the rest of the lesson, we won't look at rational functions that are in this format, as they'd be condensed to one fraction instead. So this function is also equal to 2x plus 4 divided by 2x plus 3. You can now use arrow notation to describe the asymptotes of rational functions. We can extend this knowledge to when we want to graph rational functions.